Uh, good evening, everyone. This is a select board meeting for April 11th of 2022. I'll read tonight's agenda. <clears throat> Under new business, we have um, need to review and approve 2022 local emergency management plan. Need to sign fl fleet permits, approve meeting minutes, sign warrants, sign road and bridge standards. Sign annual financial plan. Uh, we have an uh, employment application to review. We have Morgan Daybell coming in. Um, he's, uh, what's his title? Financial manager for Yeah. Okay. That. Coming in to speak to us about uh, the tax money situation. Um, we will go into executive session at the end of the meeting. Uh, speak on Cisco Hydro. We got Brian Derry here. And your name? Brian. Okay. All right. Uh, we might so jump right in. What can we do for you tonight, Brian? I'm checking to see what kind of number we're looking at on the Hydro deal. Okay. Well, we're give one of these. This is the numbers we're looking at. We're trying to negotiate some sort of deal with them here. Uh, we're gonna talk about that a little later. But, um, do you want to jump right in on that? Yeah, we're going to go into executive. Session. We can go into executive, talk yeah. to him, and then we can go there. Yeah. I'll make a motion to go into executive to speak with about the highway application person. Okay. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Take right. a motion to return, uh, exit executive session and oh. return to our regular meeting. I'll make a motion. All right. Get a second on that. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we'll get back to our regular meeting. Um, one minute, so I'll mm -hmm. jump right into this. Mm -hmm. right. Morgan, how are you tonight? Okay. <laughs> how are you all? Very <laughs> good. Excellent. Best we can. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you got any good news to give us or anything? Well, I don't that... have any new bad news at least. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I am happy to hear any updates that you guys have. Um, when I spoke last with Seth and Kim, um, it sounded like the bill that, um, that Senator Brock was pushing through um, which would raise that, that cap for the, the money that towns can get. Um, would help you guys significantly um, if you're the only ones going at it this year. And if it gets through, and I look today, and it still seems to be stuck in a, one of the money committees. Um, but those do tend to work their way through one pillar slowly. Um, I had mentioned to Seth that um, I had heard there was a similar instance in the past where the state used a different uh, method to take care of the education portion of a similar situation with their back taxes. I've not been able to find anybody at AOE who can point me to what town that was or what it was, hmm. but I'm still pursuing that. Um, I think if if that actually is a thing and that can um, be activated, it would give you all a little more confidence because you wouldn't have to worry about either that cap going up or um, having to share it with however many other towns are in the same boat. Yeah. Um, so I will I'll keep pursuing that, um, and I'll let you know if I, I hear anything. Um, one other concern that was brought up um, in one of the conversations was around cash flow, and when you guys start getting your tax money in in the fall, you've got a certain number of days to pay the school portion to the school. Um, I don't have the authority to waive that. The school board does. I mean, they can't say don't worry about sending it to us, but they can say, um, you know, we'll let you go past the, the 30 days or the statutory deadline. Um, and so I don't want to make any promises, but obviously if that's going to be a benefit to you to have some flexibility there, um, you know, I'm going to assume that our, our other towns are going to be able to pay on time and, 
and we'll be able to um, to help with that cash flow without hurting you all. Okay. Um, and that's something that we can, you know, we can plan on bringing it to a September school board meeting if we need to have it. I don't know when. When are your taxes due in Sheldon normally? November fifteenth. November. Okay, so then we can bring it up in December. Um, you know, by then we've had a, a pretty good shot of our state aid um, directly from the state. So I would um, I would think we'd be in a position that we could help you out if a couple of months is going to help. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you've got any updates or if you've got any questions um, from the school side. Um, I was talking with Seth earlier today. Um, the way that I look at the situation that you've got here is that if you could go back three years in time and know that this assessment was going to change, you could have changed it then and your municipal tax rate would have changed and you would have been able to raise the right amount of money for your budget. Yeah. If That's you had done that, gone back three years, it wouldn't have changed your school tax any because it's now a statewide tax and it's just up to each of the towns to collect it. So I think there's an argument to be made that the individual towns should not be on the hook for that. Um, change in assessment. Yeah, that's what baffles me. This money that now we're expected to pay it back, it's not money that we've ever had our hands on, you know, and but now all of a sudden we're we're on the hook to pay it back and mm -hmm. I just uh, uh it's hard to rack your brain around that. Right. But uh, we are working with the uh, you know now that the settlement's been done um, and the appeal didn't go through. We're in talks with the hydro about how we can possibly pay this back without being bankrupt in the town or whatever, you know. And uh, so, as we get further along with that, I guess we can, you know, keep you guys informed, and we'll figure out more what the state's going to help us with, and okay. and all that. But and do you have a sense at what that timeline looks like? I mean, I imagine it's going from your lawyer to their lawyer, and it's a couple yeah. weeks, and a couple hours billed each time. Yeah, yeah, they, we're open to have it all settled before our next board meeting in two weeks. Okay. But uh, that's that's uh, I spoke to a representative from the hydro, and that's what we're we're shooting for to have this on paper and settled, and within the next couple of weeks, <coughs> because every day you're you're playing with it, you're either paying an attorney back and forth or, you know, and we're racking up interest charges, you know, so yeah. we both, you know, said that we need to get this over and done with and, and then figure out how to pay for it, but yeah, so that's what, that's what we're shooting for. Um, we're going to speak in, in executive session at the end of the meeting tonight about what what they're proposing and see if that works for us and but yeah I'd like to see more more feedback from Montpelier on this and you know this the whole thing it's uh, it's just hard to wrap your head around that you know right. you're on the hook for money that you didn't get to use and and if you know we have to pay this whole bill back in one one uh, tax bill, I mean it's three quarters of our municipal budget right there, right. and in, in one shop, and so, and it, and a lot of this is exaggerated because of COVID. I mean this this should have been settled two years ago, and it right. just it's been dragging on and dragging on, and and all that's done is made the lawyers more money and and cost us more in interest, interest. And so but we appreciate any any input you can give us and any help you can give us and we're we're trying to check with everybody and see where you know as many people as we can and see what avenues there is to take and what we can do to sure make this a little easier on everybody. Yeah well I will I will keep um, chasing down this lead, I, I hope it turns into something, but um, yeah. I would have thought I'd hear back from them by now. Um, mm -hmm. And they're understaffed like everyone, so I yeah. like that. Um, but um, I'm fairly confident Sheldon's not the first town to go through this since 
x68, x68, and um, there's got to be some some precedent for dealing with it, or we would have heard of a lot more bankrupt towns. Yeah. So well, what happened with Vernon down there with their nuclear? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that was a, a reassessment situation, given that that was um, just pretty ending. well forecasted where that was going. This strikes me as it was a bit of a surprise to the, the town that the, um, that the appeal was going to go this way. Do you need to come back to the voters to vote on a number? Do we need to, to vote on what, what number? Well, do we pay this? What we owe them? Right. No, that's that's what we owe them. We just we need to decide or figure out how we're going to pay them back. Whether we can work out some agreement with them to pay it back over a matter of years, or whether they'll waive some of the interest, or whether it's according to statute, it's due when the tax bills come out this year. So on November 15th, they can say, okay, our tax bill is this much minus what you guys owe us, and they can pay that and it'll accrue interest right up until November 15th. Or if we can work out some sort of settlement, then we'll have to approve that with that. We'll have it written up by attorneys and, and approve that. And that's what we're shooting for. We're trying to stretch it out over two or three years and uh, to ease the, ease the tax burden on us as far as payback. It would be just a credit toward their tax bill for the next three years. So if nothing happens, they have the ability to short you on their next tax payment? Yep. Yeah. Uh, no. And yeah. what, what fiscal year is that funding? So those November payments, is, is that? This year. Okay. We approve the budget and the town meeting and then it gets funded. And so that's in July to June? It's, the it's January to December. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we might have a shortfall this year's budget, but we'll have to figure out how to make that right. And that's why we're trying to explore as many different things as we can and find out what the best way to go is and whether we can get any help on it or not. But you didn't ask the taxpayers to borrow money in anticipation of taxes, neither. So I don't know how this all works. We don't need to. We don't need to. According to our attorney, we don't need to. State statute thing here. They have to pay the bills. But you can't borrow all of it, you only borrow a portion of it, according to the state statutes. We can have a special meeting and to, to uh, ask the voters to approve that we set up a bond or borrow 700 and whatever thousand or 900,000, whatever the total, I haven't looked at it lately, but whatever that total is that we owe them, we can ask for that and, and stretch that out over five years. According to our attorney, we can ask for a special vote or we can bite the bullet and, and uh, be short, and next year's taxes are going to be a big surprise to everybody. And that's what we don't. Well, that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to stabilize things, and if we have to to uh, borrow money and or get a bond or whatever for five years or to get this paid back and get everything straightened out, that's you know might be the direction we go. But. With this um, change in the the cap for the. Um, that relief fund that currently exists. Has anybody heard if there are other towns, one of their other towns in in the same situation who are looking to tap into that? And two, um, if that's something where if you get a payment plan, let's call it from a hydro plant, 
if you can go back to that in you know multiple years in a row. No, I think you can only go the year that we're in. So it's only a one year. Approximately yeah. written into the contract. Mm -hmm. then. But we have to make a plan now. According to our attorney, he said to make a plan now, even if we get the money from the state, doesn't mean we have to pay it all. We can pay that whatever we make yep. this plan as we can just keep that money and keep paying as we go. Yep. Okay. Because we have to have a plan. Yeah. Is the money from the state just state school money or is it municipal money too? I believe it's the school. It's going to be from the school fund. Can they still appeal their assessment? They won't if they do this three year, three years that we're in. If they, because we just did the assessment, just came in in what February? Did we get our mm -hmm. February? this year this is the year they would be up to to redo to come in for an assessment because it's good for three years so that assessment was good for the past three years this year they could come in for another appeal but seeing the assessment was done in February that would still hold for the next three years unless they had a major problem at the hydro where it decreased their value or the town did a statewide or townwide appraisal, which we're not there yet. But then people have deep pockets; they can keep coming back to us. Well, they can't know. because they can only do it for when this assessment is good for valid for three years. But in three years they can come back. Right, in three years yeah. they can come back. And they have well, deep we, deep pockets. We could, we but could there's nothing there. we can do about that. I mean, right. they can come and as that's their. I guess that's their job. That's why I don't understand why the state doesn't have more control of these industrials or, you know, power plants or whatever, you know, that, that as a local small town, we aren't qualified to appraise something like that. So it costs us a lot of money to appraise it and defend that value. And, uh, you know, the there should be something at the state level for these, you know, they want, they want businesses in the state of Vermont, but then they don't want to help us with, you know, trying to keep them here and keep them happy. And, but that's a whole other discussion, I guess. So, but. Do we have insurance on the listeners part of that or that's hearsay? Insurance for what? Bonded, like whatever. Oh. No. It's not really a listers because we had that assessment done by an appraisal. Yeah. That that money was agreed upon between the town and the hydro in 2015 or 16, 15, 15. 2015. That amount was agreed upon because they were in a, a tax appeal then. So that amount was agreed on in 2015, which in 2019, they got to appeal well, they again. Got, they got new owners, so they... Do we have that in writing? Have what in writing? That appeal. That was all done. What appeal? Right the new, the new appeal? 2015 or whatever? Yeah. yeah, we we hired an appraiser and we went through the whole process. and. They appealed to the Listers, and then they went to the BCA board, and then they went to environmental court on that time. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it went to um, Supreme Court. You guys settled out of court in 2015. You went to, it went to Supreme Court, and this time it went to PBR. Yeah. But that, that's their right to do that. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. like any homeowner's right to... You know, you can appeal your tax value. And, uh, once the decision's made, I think the decision's good for three years, but after that, you can go back and do it again. You know, it's, or it's their right as a, as a property owner. So, 
so we're going to try to come to some conclusion with them to, you know, make them happy and us happy and hopefully it stays the way it is for a while. You know, because we could go back and change, you know, the listers could go back and change their value right back up to where it was before. But then we'd be right back in the same fight again, you know, over the value of it. And whether, you know, whether the decision's the same or different, it's still going to be a lot of legal fees and a lot of, you know, everything else. So. Well, that's what you where we're at with that situation and we appreciate your help in looking into things for us absolutely i assume you don't need me to stick around for after your executive so that's just about the, the deal between the two parties yeah i think we're we should be all set well kim and seth both know how to get hold of me okay um, and i will yeah i will let you all know through the two of them um, if we make any progress on this other front. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. JP Morgan. I think it was Jay. What? I think it was Town of Jay. Town of Jay? Okay. I will look into that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All right. Oh. Uh, jump right into the minutes and hours and all that stuff. This, um, that we just have to sign off for Jacob. You have to sign it. Oh, okay. we, we did it last meeting. Does anybody have his contact information? I have it. I, I yeah. forwarded that guy's email to Jake. I didn't give him his email address. Okay. Because I got a call from the messenger a while back, mm -hmm. or the courier, I don't remember which one. I think it was a messenger, but and Jake was going to get a hold of him. He was asking if I knew how to get a hold of him. Stephen Dodd, Seth Hungerford, David Klobet, Joe Dunlovey, Nick Norris, Kim Dufresne, Seth Cattell, and James Childs. And by Zoom was uh, Marlena Valenta. Uh, I opened the meeting at 7.35 and read the agenda. Addition made to the agenda for executive session at the end of the meeting to discuss the tax appeal. Marlena Valenta from Northwest Regional Planning discussed energy saving programs to winterize homes available to residents. She will send information to be posted on the town website. At 7.45, Seth met motion, to, excuse me, motion to go into executive spec session to speak with the highway employees, seconded by David and all in favor. Uh, we exited executive session, we discussed Education opportunities for the highway department and reviewed their pay raises. At 8.10, we entered back into regular session. Signed fleet permits and warrants 2111 and, uh, 2211 and 2212. We reappointed Jacob Kane to Northwest CUD. I read the meeting minutes from March 14th. Seth's motion to accept is read, seconded by Nick and all in favor. Uh, we reviewed and approved Northwest Regional Planning contact list and municipal assessment request for 22-23 year. Uh, we signed the FCC notification for new water meter reader. 
Uh, we reviewed the 2021 audit draft. Clerk will make urgent check procedure and policy for review of the next meeting. Uh, we didn't get that done. We'll get that on the next one then. Uh, at 8.30, Nick motion to enter back into executive session to discuss the tax appeal, seconded by Seth and all in favor. And at 9.30, uh, we exited executive session and we discussed the tax appeal with the hydro. And at 9.30, we set motion to adjourn, seconded by Nick and all in favor of the meeting adjourned. I make a motion that Joe wasn't here last week. Joe no, wasn't here last week. No. <laughs> okay. So we will make a change to the meeting minutes. I'll scratch off Joe's name and I'll initial underneath the scratch off. I get a motion to accept the I'll make a motion. minutes. I'll make a motion to accept that. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? sent to the state Jim for, for the road. Yes. For a grant that he's doing for the heel road. I thought we didn't have class one roads in the state, in the town. I thought that was yeah, we do class one. Is it two and three? Yeah. All right. Class one for state highway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we put that under one and two? Yeah. We just We're need, need to, to change now. that. Yeah. With Seth this morning, um, here's an email back from that Tyler Billingsley, the engineer on that. They were doing uh, looking at the core on the um, hill there. The other Seth, not me. The other Seth, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Is it looks like uh, around 400,000 for construction. I ended up to 450 with the 
contingency and engineering and legal fees. Uh, Seth was going to get back to him and see if there was a cheaper way. I think he said Randy had sketched out a. It was um, oh, what am I trying to say? The precast, you know, the concrete. But he had it a little different. He said. And, uh, but, you know, they were talking about it and, and um, structure grants max out at 200,000. So, you know, the town would be on the hook for 250 of it. So, Seth was wondering if there was a cheaper alternative, like just a, a straight box culvert, I think would be cheaper. He told me it was a, uh, it had a slope on the top, I guess, so it didn't have so much pressure on the, it was a newer design, but I said, uh, you know, 450,000, and he said right now we're like 18th in the rankings of what happened this year at ours. So you've got, they've got time to look at it and see if there's a, something different they could do down there. But, he said this guy will do all the, the wetlands and all the, you know, engineering and stuff for it. So he said he seems to be good to work with, he likes him, so. That's where he's at with that. Um, and we can delay that for one more year, right, through the permit process? To be able to do that? I, I believe, believe so. Okay. Yeah. As long as we keep applying for extensions, we can still do that. Yeah. Okay. He said the roads are pretty good shape right now. He thought they're doing a little more gravel. They had to do the Colton Road today and um, Gilman Road. There's a couple spots on there, but he was going to try to get out. If we don't get too much rain this week, he's going to try to get out and run the grader around uh, before he leaves on Friday, so. So this road and bridge standards is pretty uh, basic, right? We've got, uh, Hill. They send that in, so they're probably, I'll probably get it in the mail from their insurance company. Okay.
stuff that we can get the super out and all hooked up there. And Jim's gonna start doing that here on the first truck. Two conditions are right. And give him something to do with on. As long as it's not too wet. Right. Not too wet, but not too dry. Right. It's dusty. Where's the brushes last year? Last year they got a new brush, right? They did last year. So right he, at the end. he said they usually get two and a half years out of it, so he's expecting you know, it'll be good for another two years. You know. snow bank so that the water would get off the road and it sucked him down in there. He said it was six o'clock or whatever on the night and Jim had already gone so he just called down courts and had that thing out. Where was it? Yeah. Duffy Hill. The, you know where Burns is, the beaver pond by Burns is there on that other end there. So it was running the, the blue out, the damn blue out or something and it was water was gushing to there and Running over across the road, so tried to fix it, and he said he got sucked in. That's been some serious water. Yeah. I think it's more. He was worried he was going to wash the road out. So. <laughs> I mean, I guess we have to pile down too, and uh, that's going to work. Hmm. Plan. He he's willing to do that again, must be. He's fire chief. Yes. And did you see there was a workshop? I think for that one. Did I see the top page? If anyone's interested. Anybody interested in being the emergency manager director? Um, 
see uh, what does it entail? Is that the foot messenger? That was the tertiary means, and everything shuts down. And I still think we can get Greg to do that. <laughs> management needs to contact municipal leaders to determine status and support requirements during an emergency. The emergency management director and two other local points of contact who should have authority of local information are listed at right. all of us. We got this all filled out in my, in my name, uh, but then we have to uh, 
Yeah, you need to appoint an emergency management director. And that's Rick, right? What's that? Is that Rick? No? Yeah, I guess. So, it's just a one-year term, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm following to me and we share. Session to discuss Mississoi Hydro, and then as we exit executive session, we will adjourn for the evening. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Aye.